Let me test it real quick. You are not, but I wonder if it'll play on these little speakers. Just so you know, I'm going to um, introduce these as good exhibits, defense exhibits, because they can bring up the 911 uh, calls. Yes, uh, they're not burned. I can burn them, or they can burn them tonight. Okay. Uh, I've already had things numbered now, but I guess it's defense 10 and 11. Defense 10 and 11. Is Miss Sandlin here? Is she ready? She's out. Right okay. Now, All right. You can go ahead and get the drill. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Are there any issues that came up over lunch we need to take up before we resume? All right. Ms. Sandlin, please come on back. broke for lunch, you had been sworn in previously, you'll continue to be under oath, and please yes, answer any questions Mr. McLeod may have. Okay. Mr. McLeod, you may inquire. Thank you. Ms. Allen, do you know Adam Ferguson? I do. Or I did. He's passed away. Okay. But you, you know him? Um, I'd never hung out with him or been around him, but it was Timothy's um, best friend that had passed away. Okay. And, and was he... Uh, you don't know many of Timothy's friends, though, right? Mm-mm. Okay. Um, how did you know, how did you know Adam Ferguson? Um, I had heard Timothy Tim telling me different stories about their childhood and growing up and um, being friends with them. They, it was Tim, Brian Hall, and Adam Ferguson, but I had only seen him. I think one time he came to the door, but they stood out t outside and talked. So and then he left. So, but I'd never been in acquaintance with him personally. Okay. So, there's a lot of people I'm gathering from the testimony that you didn't know that Tim stole me. Right. Is that right? I mean, he. They're six years different, so of course, you know, they all went to school together. I guess. Okay, but but you're in Tim Stoll's life pretty. I mean, he's living with you at some point. Mm-hmm. 
He's helping out with the bills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, at this point, you mentioned towards the end of your testimony that you guys are still contacting each other secretly at mm -hmm. some point when there's a no contact. Right. Okay. Um, and when he wasn't in jail or home incarceration, he was living with you? Yes. Okay. And he helped pay the bills? Yes. Okay. And he worked? Uh, at that he may have been laid off. Um, I can't remember at that time. I know, I know he got a job um, and was working, but he wasn't on work release. I don't know which time you're referring to. So, I'm just asking generally. Yeah. I'm oh yeah. To mess you up here. <laughs> Sorry. If, yeah. If, okay. So, but you all were to the point, uh, at least as far as you can see, that when Tim was out and not in jail or home incarceration or whatever. Um, whether the contact was no contact or not, he was living with you and helping you pay the bills. Yes. Okay, and he's helping with your children. Yes. Okay, now, um, the Commodore brought up that he physically attacked you. It was a domestic altercation, yes. Can you explain what happened? Um, I don't even remember what the fight was about, but it was a heated argument, and um, we both like pushed each other, and it was a lot bigger than it was made out to be. But of course, victims advocates, you know, I didn't prosecute or do any kind of taking the PO out or anything like that. You didn't want to. You didn't want to go along with that. No. Okay. Um, do you remember who the detective was that was on the case? There was a woman. I don't. Was it Annette Gibson? Uh, yeah. Um, and she wasn't a witness to it, right? No, no. So, um, if the report said that you were strangled to unconsciousness, 